I'm all for collaboration, but I think one of the most important aspects of collaboration is allowing space for individuals to shine. And this is where the next feature comes in quite handy, and we're going to be covering private mode. Now, I'm highlighting two use cases for private mode here, so it's very high-level use cases. You might find more, but just to give some context, um, in normal sessions, um, there is times where perhaps you're running an ideation session where there's some senior people or you're sharing or prioritizing ideas and people might be a bit nervous to share their real thoughts and feelings and they might follow the wallet or the seniority. So they're going to kind of vote with what the senior person says. So you need some functionality to avoid that. You need uh, people to be able to express themselves as individuals. The other thing that I want to point out here is Anonymity. So, for example, you're running a retrospective, someone's give, giving feedback about uh, my ability to deliver these video clips, and they want to do this in an anonymous way. You want to create a space for people to do that safely and securely. Now, um, to before I go into the demonstration of how private mode works, I just want to indicate or point out a little feature that not a lot of people know about that is very handy, but is something that this private mode wants to work against to make sure that people are comfortable, especially when it comes to um, anonymity. So, for example, when I add a piece of content, of course, this is digital, um, everything is tracked. And in fact, if I, as a facilitator or a member, click on this piece of content and then right click on it, I have a little contextual menu here. And this is by design. I can see that there's a little info fly out over here. So if I hover over that, I can see that indeed Vanner Pucher has added this piece of content. This is super useful when you run a session. Um, let's say people share a bunch of ideas. It's an open session with a team and people start adding content and you want to quickly ask who's added this piece of content. I can right click, see, hey, uh, Susan, I like what you said here. Could you elaborate a little bit? So this is really handy. However, it's less handy when it comes to um, wanting people to be anonymous or perhaps if you want people to add uh, avoid groupthink. However, let's address two of these aspects. The first aspect I want to address is like how do you avoid groupthink in your session? So both of these are going to work with the uh, private mode se uh, setting and I'm going to show you where, where that is right now. And as always, you go to the top right corner here and you'll see these little spy goggles over here and this is private mode. Of course, the next thing I'm going to say is in all the clips is you click on private mode and this is going to enable you to set up some settings here to, to enable what type of private mode do you want. So you have two options here. Option number one is no, keep authors of this content anonymous. Now remember when I showed you, and I'm going to demo in a second how this works, that um, they, you can actually track the person who's added the piece of content. If I tick this radio button, it will actually allow me to hide that content forever. You'll never, ever be able to access that. So that's great for anonymity. The one that I want to demo first is that for the time that there's private mode, please just go into private mode. I can see who's added the contents afterward. Now, to activate private mode, I just hit start here. Everybody will get a prompt. So when I click there and I say, great, I got it. We are now going to go into private mode. Just remember, if you're sharing your screen as a facilitator, people can still see what you're adding. However, for everybody else, their content will now be anonymous. So I'm going to ask Bob what he thought of my video clips. He needs to give me a little bit of feedback. And he's going to go across to the canvas here, add his sticky note with his feedback. And then you'll see that there's indeed sticky notes appearing. And Bob is very busy adding content. He's got one sticky note there. And now back to the functionality of the facilitator. So what do I do? Once again, I can time box this using the, the timer if I want to. I would actually encourage you to do that. However, as per the voting sessions, you need to go in as a facilitator and actually end private mode. Once again, private mode will stay active. And in fact, you can leave private mode on for a couple of days if you want to. It will only switch off until you or one of your facilitators, co-facilitators come in and actually end private mode. Now, the most exciting part I've done in many kind of ideation sessions is actually when you end private mode. So for example, I'm going to end private mode right now, and this is going to reveal all the content here. So oops, I'm going to get a prompt over here and I'm going to end private mode. Everybody's going to see that private mode's ending. They'll get their prompts and boom, there's Bob's feedback. I cannot see what's on the sticky note. And just as a proof, however, the person with me in the canvas here is a visitor. If I right click on that, 
go to the information, I can still see that Bob has added this piece of content. So Bob has indicated that he wants more waistcoats. I've got no problem with that. However, now I want to go into a private mode session where I want people to have real honest and direct feedback. And for that, I go back into private mode once again. So I'm gonna demo how this works. Here is private mode, activate that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate the anonymous feature. So if I click on that, this means that any content that is added to the canvas after I've started private mode will remain anonymous forever. You can ask our help section here at Mural, not even they would be able to help you. It will remain anonymous. And to prove that that works, I'm gonna add start this, this session here. It's going to give everybody the prompt and the warning, warning that uh, private mode is starting. And of course, if, you, if I go here to the top bar, once private mode kicks in, you'll see that the, the private mode is once again indicated over here and it's active. And then I'm going to ask Bob to add content again. However, I should probably not tell you that it is Bob, right? But let's quickly test the functionality. So it comes in, adds the content, you'll see the content being added once again. You don't know who that is. You can't see the cursor or any indicator. So if there's multiple people, people will be adding, adding the content. And then once that is done, once again, I can run it over a couple of days or whenever I want to end it, the facilitator comes in, goes to the top here and then ends private mode. That'll give everybody a prompt and then I can end the private mode and then we go back into seeing what is on the mural. The content is now available to read. So what's up with the strange accent? Whoever's given me that feedback, sorry, born with it, I'm a South African. However, just to prove to you, I'm gonna right click on this, go into show info, and what you'll see here is that it'll indicate to you that this content is anonymous. It's been added in private mode. So you cannot track or ever know who's added the sticky note. So this is a great way, once again, for you to capture content either anonymously or avoid groupthink. Some great little use cases here using private mode. And uh, I invite you to give it a test drive.